So today I am demoing these lemon meringue tarts. They are absolutely delicious. You've got that gorgeous lemon filling and that meringue top. So let's get started. So I have my oven preheated at 160 fan. So that's gonna be nice and hot. We're gonna blind bake this first. It is really easy to blind bake, so don't be afraid of it. And it's great for tarts or quiches. It's a really handy technique to know. Now I made this pastry myself, but you can pop into your local shop and get some short crust pastry in the fridge section. And that's absolutely fine. So I'm rolling this out. If you want to take it out of the fridge, maybe 20 minutes before you need it, just so that it's not too cold and it makes it a lot easier to roll it out. If you struggle with rolling out pastry, you can pop it between two sheets of parchment paper, sprinkle it with flour and roll it in between. That way it's not gonna break up. So that's a great little tip. But this is nice and cool from been in the fridge. So I'm getting this nice and thin because it will rise a little in the oven. So you don't want your pastry to be too thick when you pop it into your case. Now I am using these little mini tartlet cases, but the same method applies if you have a larger flan dish. So it doesn't matter if it's a bigger dish or a smaller dish, obviously the cooking time will vary, but you'll have a fair idea yourself. So I will keep going and I'm gonna get a little bit of this pastry cut up and I'll show you how to pop it into your case. I've cut a little circle slightly bigger than my tin and I'm just gonna pop that out. Always work from the edge of your larger circle of pastry that way you're going to have very little waste i'm just going to give this a little roll with my rolling pin just to take out any thickness so it is a little larger than whatever size your little tin is and i'm just going to pop that as centered as you can kind of look at it from above and then using your thumbs gently because it is quite thin and go around and press that in so you just want to get it in place first so just get this in place and then we can press down into the corners like so and really press the pastry into that's going to give you that lovely little shape when it's when it's cooked and it pops out you're going to get this shape so you really want to press your finger in here the whole way around but also along the baseline so that it, it, you get that uh, corner effect. So take a minute and just press it in. When that's done, I will come back. So that is all pressed in. I'm pretty happy with that. And I'm gonna get a fork and just make a couple of piercings and then use your thumb, your two thumbs to just rub away any excess. The whole way around. You want that really sitting in there nice and neat. And just brush, brush it away with your thumb. Like so. And just go double check again that it is in the corner. That, that area there is the one that you want to get really tight into the case. And that's it. Get that into your fridge. It's really important that you refrigerate at this point. It just seems to cool it and set it so that when it cooks it doesn't move whereas if this goes and gets warm and you pop it in the oven it's a little bit more likely to not keep its shape i suppose that's the best way to say it, it keeps its shape better when it it's been refrigerated so i'm going to get this in the fridge while i make the filling and that's it we're nearly done believe it or not if you have any pastry left over you usually do you can pop it in some cling film and into your fridge and make a quiche in a couple of days that will keep fine for a few days in the fridge so that's something you can make with any leftovers i'm actually going to blind bake first because the filling is so quick to make we'll get this done first i've taken this out of the fridge i'm going to press in one more time just to make sure it's nicely fitted in the corners and i'm using some tin foil you can also use parchment paper if you like and covering it completely and then i have my baking beans you will get these in any home store. You can also use pasta, dry, uh, dry pasta or rice. And the idea is that you're filling this in 
and popping it in the oven for a few minutes, maybe eight to 10 minutes, and this is gonna keep that pastry down. If I don't add the tin foil and the beans and I pop this in the oven, the pastry will rise and we're gonna lose that lovely shape. So this goes in the oven for maybe six to seven minutes. Then I'll take out the beans and the tin foil and pop it back in for maybe three to four minutes, just as it goes golden, and that is ready for the filling. A little tip, if you are doing it in mini cases, pop the lot onto a baking tray. It saves over and back to the oven six times, going in and out. While, while my tartlets are in the oven, I'm gonna leave them there for maybe six to seven minutes before I take the tin foil and the beans out. I'm gonna make the meringue. So I have a KitchenAid mixer here. You can use a handheld mixer. And it's so important that when you're making a meringue, the bowl that you make it in is spotless. Any dirt, any moisture, that meringue is not gonna work. So I'm just giving this another good wipe here, even though it's clean, with some kitchen paper. Get that into a stand. I have three egg whites. When you're separating, make sure your hands are clean and dry. Be careful, no shell or egg yolk gets in there. And once you can have a clean bowl, and your egg whites have no shell or egg yolk, you're, you're good to go. So we're gonna pour these in here and we're gonna get this on and just get these to a nice fluffy peak. It's gonna take a few minutes, so I'll come back. Okay, so this is how we want them to look before we add any sugar at all. That only took about two minutes. So they're just light and fluffy. And what we do next, I have 170 grams of castor sugar. I'm gonna spoon it one spoon at a time. That is all I'm adding. Get this on one spoon at a time until it's nice and glossy. That's medium speed. And just take your time. Give each spoon a chance to incorporate into your mixture. I can already see the mixture is getting nice and glossy. So fingers crossed it works. You never really know until you take it out of the oven. But you'll have a fair idea and I'll show you why. So it's getting nice and thick here. I'm gonna bring it a little closer and show you how it's looking. So you can see how it should look. It's thickening up, adding one spoon at a time until it's all gone. Now I've just put the last spoon in. I want to give it a quick mix for about 30 seconds. And this is how we know. See how that stands up in a peak? That's what you want. And the ultimate meringue test. I really hope it's done. I do not want to uh, ruin my hair. You get your bowl and you pop it over your head. And if that does not move, if it doesn't move, you are good to go. It's worked. If that slides around inside, go again. I'm sorry, but the best thing to do is just go again. So that has worked. Um, so I'm gonna set that aside and we're gonna make the mix. Before I do that, let's check these cases. Okay, so what we need to do now is carefully remove the tin foil and the beans. And they go back in the oven for three to four minutes. At this point, I usually use my finger or the back of the spoon to, again, I know I'm obsessed, but I love that perfect shape. Just press down. And all we want is a very slight brown on this. So back in the oven for, as I said, two to three minutes, keep an eye on them. Now for the filling, this takes two minutes. I have a tin of condensed milk and a tin opener. Make sure you have a tin opener because you generally don't have a poly top and get that lid off. Now into the bowl that I actually used um, for the sugar. To avoid mess, get that all in. Use a spatula to really clean that out.
Next up, I have two lemons and I am going to get the zest using a zester. If you don't have a zester, you can use a cheese grater. Remember, one strike, don't go over the same place twice or you will get a bitter taste. And to get some extra juice out of those lemons, roll them well in your hand or against a worktop. And these are ready. They were in for maybe three to four minutes. They're just beginning to go golden, so we can set these aside. A little tip when you're collecting lemon juice is to add a sieve on top of the bowl and that will collect any seeds and you can really give those lemons a good squeeze and you don't have to be fishing out seeds, which can be tricky. The last part, we have our condensed milk and I have my three egg yolks that I kept from earlier. We're gonna add the egg yolks, mix, and then add the lemon juice and the zest. And you will see how quickly it thickens, like a science experiment. So let's go. Get that well mixed up. The gorgeous color. In with your lemon juice and zest. And almost immediately, it thickens to like a custard consistency. Give it a good mix. And that's it. So, really, it's very quick once you have the pastry cases done. And you can do them ahead, which is a little tip. That's it show you the consistency so just like custard so I have my filling my meringue I'm gonna pop this into a piping bag just because I love piping bags and I love to pipe things and we'll get these assembled and into the oven I'm so excited I love it. so the first thing is to add the filling to the six or if you're doing one larger tart case so you just want to fill them to the top of the pastry line before you get that meringue on top. If you do decide to pipe on the meringue, I have a disposable bag here. These are so handy. You'll get them in a supermarket and I have my little top. I haven't snipped the top just yet. I'm going to wait until I have the meringue in here. You just fold it back and I have a large spoon. Spill that in. May need to fill this more than once and it can be messy but it will be so worth it now we can snip off the end and push down your meringue it's going to be messy okay let's go so you can pipe this any way you want um you can go in the center and go all around back up let's go with that one as long as they're all uniform in their size they're going to cook the same you can also pipe them like this down up down up and the last little bit do we have enough there you go so pretty Three minutes later, they really didn't take long at all. Now my oven was on for quite a while. And when I do this recipe in the larger tin, which is about a nine inch, it normally takes kind of 15 to 20 minutes, but just to keep an eye on them because the ovens all vary. You just want them to be nicely golden on top. Taking anything out of one of these tins is a job in itself. So the best way to do it, we wanna get these on a raised wire rack because if I put them directly onto a worktop or a chopping board, the pastry is still so hot, the steam will come out and it will make it soggy. So we want the air to be able to circulate right underneath the tartlet. The base is removable. So I'm just gonna pop it up gently. And if they're good non-stick tins, it should remove perfect. So we'll get these all on here and let them cool. I can't wait to show you the inside. And here they are. I just love the mini tartlet option because you can give them to people as a little treat. So 
let's have a proper look at that that is why you want to keep pressing into that pastry the base is perfect so let's plate this up get some icing powder on top and dig in you can serve that with a little ice cream or just as it is with a lovely cup of tea let's cut inside and see that gorgeous filling so using a nice sharp knife oh that gorgeous sound look at this oh they're so perfect so perfect Absolutely gorgeous, if I do say so myself. And of course, the most important part, they may look pretty, but do they taste good? Mm. Oh, that lemon, that pastry, so crispy. These are divine. You have got to make them, they're so delicious. You can see the little ingredients that you needed, condensed milk, three eggs, some sugar, and some lemons. Absolutely gorgeous. Get that pastry in the shop or make it yourself. This is just still warm. And have that with some ice cream. What a perfect dessert. Thank you for watching this video. I really hope you give these a go. They're absolutely delicious. If you have any requests for any other recipes, please pop them in the comments below. I will leave all the ingredients and details in the description.